Hello, Smite fans. Welcome to Patch Notes. My name is Hi Res Bart. That lovely lady to my left, your right, is Hi Res Kelly. And we are, uh, well, ready to go here with our patch notes. You may have seen Dev Talk yesterday where we kind of gave you our first look at Nox. And today we will be going over not only her kit, all the numbers, and all of the interesting tidbits that you want to know about it. We will also be talking about the balance adjustments and new features coming into this patch. So without any further ado, I'll let Kelly go ahead and kick us off. Kelly! What is this patch? What is it called? What are we doing? It's Why called The One Who Knocks. If you guys missed it yesterday, we had a deaf talk where we went over the newest goddess, uh, Nux. She's a Greek goddess, the goddess of night, I believe. And she... She has a, a lot of people are calling her the anti-mage mage. Now, why do you, why do you presume people are calling her the anti-mage mage? Well, she's mage? got a lot of abilities that kind of are effective against casters, primarily. Anything that's casting abilities often. But uh, we'll get into all of Nox in her uh, resplendent glory once we get through some of the other things. We'll actually take a look at her in the game uh, instead of a new burning the patch notes. Remember, patch notes will be available in long form on Reddit at the conclusion of the show. So uh, be sure to stick around for that if you want to see them in their full form. Let's go ahead and get right on into it with our new god cards coming Ooh. out. We have some skins in this patch, of course. As you see, Nox, Rom, Agni, and Nua all having some updated skins. And, well, let's hop right in. That's right. Uh, the first skin that we're going to be seeing is uh, the Crimson Eclipse Nox skin. That is her recolor. And the skin... Uh, there it is. Ooh. Uh, that, no, that's her base card. That's her base card. Ah, all right. So that is her, you know, natural model. And then we have the recolor, which is Crimson Eclipse Nox. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's a cool-looking card, I think. It's pretty cool. I guess that means that her effects are going to have a little bit of a red tint to them, perhaps, in that skin. Probably. Judging by what I see there. Uh, so one of the big skins uh, coming up next is Orbital Strike Rom. Yes. That is going to be the next Odyssey item, guys. If, you, uh, if you're if you a big fan of the Odyssey, remember that every purchase That's through the so Odyssey, cool. it'll go... I know, isn't it? Oh, it's really sweet. Every purchase through the Odyssey will go towards the SWC prize pool, everyone. We just reached a million dollars last week. Mm -hmm. So uh, I believe we're actually... Like one million and like fifty thousand right now, so let's see how high we can get. Yeah, almost one point two million now. I yeah, Orbital Strike Rom looking pretty, uh, pretty sweet there. I thought at least uh, he is going to be an Odyssey item, guys. If you didn't catch that, uh, and finally we have uh, the new Oskin. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one, guys, and uh, we'll explain exactly your path to getting the new Oskin. Uh, basically, the deal here is that. Uh, you know, kind of, uh, if you have been following Smite, that there is on Twitter. If you follow, you can get the Artemis skin. Facebook will get you raw. Nua will be held and used for promotional purposes for YouTube. So uh, more information to come about that in the days to come, but you will be able to see her in game. And as you can see, it is, uh, I think, Water Dancer Nua. Yes, Water Dancer Nuwa. And uh, we have Infernal Agni. This skin is sweet also. So if you have purchased 12 items in the Odyssey, similar to the six items you purchase, you get the, the loading screen cards. Yes. You're going to get this uh, Agni skin, so that is 12 items, everyone. I believe that is all of the items that we have currently released in the Odyssey. So Yes, so uh, yeah, if you have everything, you'll get this skin. And uh, the Agni skin is very uh, reminiscent of like the Human Torch. It's kind of what mm -hmm. You don't see it so much in the God card here, but you'll see it when we get into the game. And finally, for all of you fat Loki players out there, Kabraken does have his golden legendary cards. What did you say? Fat Loki. Fat Loki? You don't know about Fat Loki? I have not. I'll He's... tell you all about Fat Loki later. But there you all see right. his gold card. Let's take a look at his diamond card as well here uh, before we do move on. It is... Uh, Old Kabrakan. We don't have a diamond card actually available for you today. Ooh, I wonder if the dime, if the walls sure are going to be diamond. I bet, yeah, I bet oh, you they I, are. I hope so. Well, let's uh, let's move into a couple small pieces here. Uh, voice packs are going to be available in this patch for the new skins and the new god Nox. Mm -hmm. uh, Orbital Strike Rom has a unique voice pack, as does Infernal Agni. And before we do finally move on from the gods, uh, we have an updated Fenrir card to show you here. Ooh. Ooh, indeed. This looks like it's for his skin. Yes, yeah, his recolor. Yeah, so for his blue recolor, sweet new Fenrir card where he looks uh, all awesome and his frost fang skin there. Mm -hmm. So we got a few new ward skins and player icons. We have added the country flags, Ecuador, El Salvador, Guatemala, Andor Honduras, Nicaragua, Paraguay, and Uruguay. I tried to say that as properly as possible. I apologize if I messed <laughs> it up. And we have a international 2014 icon. We do indeed, and... Uh, of course, still no Malaysia, sorry, Young Bay. It's coming, buddy. Someday. When, whenever, you're, whenever you play better. We have a, uh, a plethora of new emotes, and you can now yeah. purchase and play emotes in the match lobby. Yeah, so uh, a little more opportunity to preview them. Um, and yeah. there's, this list is long. We won't read through it, but uh, suffice to say, it goes from Bastet to Zeus. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of waving and clapping and a few other uh, additional emotes. 
And I believe that is it for icons and all emotes. And then we're going to move on to the miscellaneous. Yes, so we now have, uh, as you see there on the lower third, daily login bonus. So we've added a new daily login bonus system that gives increasing rewards for logging in every day. So you definitely want to be a part of that. Uh, new visual treatments for end of match, match lobby and defeat banners. This is all miscellaneous stuff. There's a lot of it, guys. We'll try to blow through it. Uh, improvements to easy co-op AI difficulty. Um, some game notification and HUD editor stuff. Uh, it, there was a rare issue where changing casting mode on some abilities would result in different interrupt handling. So, I mean, a lot of this stuff is very small. There's been some changes to custom matches. Uh, shadows have been optimized a little bit. Jungle camp names. Uh, the controller support's probably the biggest change yeah, here, especially absolutely. because we, you know, we're uh, opening up on Xbox One, mm -hmm. and I know that there's probably a few players that want to get used to the control, the handle controls, and everything. So, yes. yeah, the the big the big highlights of that Xbox uh, controller support or any controller support is that. Well, we now support shoulder button modifications, which basically means that you could bind, you know, L1 and X to a single command instead of having those both be different things. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of opening up the controller for those of you that do uh, like to play on a 360 or an Xbox One controller. You can now uh, have a little bit more versatility in the way you bind your keys. That's right. And uh, we're going to go move on to items now, everyone. i uh, fixed the following items not showing under the correct fil filters in the item shop, and there are a lot of the newer items. The Anseal, Runeforge Hammer, Sovereignty, and Ick... Vile? Ich vile. Ich vile. Yeah. Uh, Magi's Blessing fixed an issue where Banish would cancel channeled abilities if Magi's Blessing passive was activated. And Odysseus's bow has a new sound effects. Banish would cancel channeled abilities. If Magi's Blessing passive was active. That's crazy. Yeah. Huh. So I guess that means that with Freya's Banish, even if it said that they were CC immune from the Magi's Blessing popping it would stop you from channeling your ability. Like, it would still lift you, is what I'm reading there. Hmm. But I could be wrong from that. Uh, one last thing to hit before we do move on from the miscellaneous tab is that uh, you will notice that your jungle minions do have names now. A uh, couple of reasons for this. One, well, it's easier to kind of keep track of where you are, but also uh, it will improve our stat tracking, especially for eSports. So you'll see uh, jungle control graphs coming up, uh, kind of indicating what teams have taken what camps most often uh, in upcoming broadcasts. So cool new tech coming in for my end of things. Hmm. Now let's move on to the God Balance updates and fixes. I am really excited for this. There's a couple in there that I think uh, make Kelly happy. Yes. But let's start the, off with Muzenkob. So Muzenkob Stinger is his ultimate. This ability has had its casting time basically halved from 0.6 to 0.35 seconds. This is the pre-fired, or I'm sorry, the delay after clicking the button before the ability fires. Mm -hmm. And its physical damage scaling has been increased from 100 to 110%. Yeah, uh, we went through a phase for about a month where we changed almost all of the post-hit fires mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of the gods. So a lot of these gods have this treatment, and now AMC is getting a little bit of yeah, it. Um, yeah, yeah, most gods, most gods have kind of generally reduced cast times. Um, mm -hmm for the action you feel. Amuzin's was kind of one that was, it, it wasn't forgotten. It was uh, it was actually intended to be left as long, given kind of the feel of how it fired. But we're kind of looking at that now and saying, well, realistically, Amuzin, not only does he need a buff based in, on kind of community feedback in addition to where he sits in the rankings, um, we didn't like how the ultimate felt clunky, uh, mm -hmm. kind of given how where the rest of the changes went in the game. Mm -hmm. um, so adjusting this cast time, not only it will make him feel more fluid, uh, but also, you know, it helps with the accuracy because it's going to fire quicker. And kind of a more, um, I guess, second order benefit of this is that in, in higher level play, you know, one of the big downsides to Moosing Cobb is that the fire time on his abilities is so long that you lose out a lot of DPS from your in-hand attack. So the whole mm -hmm. time you're channeling kind of the stinger and then firing it, uh, obviously 0.3 seconds when you're firing twice a second can be a shot and a half. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're looking at a, a pretty reasonable buff to Moosing, I think, here. That's right. Uh, Boxes has got a little bit of a change. His belly flop. Uh, now, if he belly flops into a cripple, it should still do damage. Apparently, there was issues before where it wasn't doing damage. So mm -hmm. if he landed into uh, Poseidon's pool, right. it wouldn't do damage. Similar to, to the bug you saw with Odin on his bird bomb. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bakasura's takedown uh, fixed a bug that allowed you to cancel the leap after casting. Uh, this did have some general uh, ramifications when it came to uh, certain aspects of Bakasura's gameplay. Obviously, we won't enumerate that too heavily, but there was a bug associated with leaping. That's right. Uh, Bastet changed. Uh, her pounce can no longer proc Hydra's Lament on a return pounce. Chonga's Jade Rabbit <laughs> now one. mourns Chonga's death. Of course it does. So there is audio now, uh, audio lines. The rabbit now has death audio lines. Awesome. Wonderful. Uh, Cupid. Uh, so moving on to Cupid, this is just a bug fix. Um, now, 
we'll, we'll kind of preamble this with that we know that Cupid is a god that you know a lot of you look at and say needs a buff, and statistically, that's not really the case. Cupid actually does very, very well for most players. Actually, same thing for uh, Hades, right? Yeah, that's right. Cupid and Hades both very, very strong, and Cupid actually among the top in the hunter role for all players. But that being said, uh, we are looking at future adjustments to Cupid. But there was a bug in which his um, his hearts on Share the Love were healing for 3% additional per stack instead of 2% as the tooltip indicates. So that has been fixed. However, we are still looking into Cupid, guys, and seeing how we can adjust him and maybe buff him in a, a few other places as well. Perhaps, yeah. I mean, it, it's, you look at kind of how this affects him, but as I said, he statistically is, is really, really strong. Uh, it's more the kind of vocal community that seems to think that he's weak. Mm. Fair enough. Uh, Finrage Ragnarok fixed an issue where he could use Blink during the ability. Wow. I'm yeah, sure. you could Blink during Ragnarok. I did not know that. I wish I did. And now I'll let yeah, you take let's, this let's one. Let's move on over to uh, the Man of Stone. It is Geb. Geb will be uh, receiving his nerfs in this patch, ladies and gentlemen. Downward adjustment uh, for Geb. Geb has enjoyed a pretty long time as a very, very strong Guardian, the top pick uh, in the class. Uh, and we put, I mean, you will remember, we put a lot of effort into making Guardians a big and viable part of the meta. That's right, um, especially after the Warriors seem to be a more favorable that's pick. Right. That's right, so he has, you know, had this long period of high potency. Um, and, and so what the nerf actually is is that the Stone Shield will no longer provide knock-up immunity for the duration of the, of the shield being on you. Hmm. The ability does still cleanse CC. Um, okay. So, We'll go a little bit through the thought process here. Basically, the idea is that knockbacks in Smite can't be beads, can't be purged. Okay. Right? You're in the air. So even if you purge, it doesn't do anything until you fall. So Geb is a character that can remove CC. So there's two things about that, right? He, he should be weak against one type, and that type should be knock up because his purge wouldn't do anything against it. So by removing the immunity, you kind of give him a little bit more of a weakness in that ability that is so strong and does, in many cases, overperform. Mm -hmm. The other piece that's a little bit, it's a little bit more my opinion, I think, than kind of the reasoning for this change, is that Geb shouldn't be really strong against gods with two CCs. Okay. Um, for example, Bacchus. Bacchus Belch will stun the target. Geb can stone shield them, but then they're also immune to the knockup from Belly Flop. Mm -hmm. And so gods with two CC should be able to, you know, kind of schedule them out in such a way that it's it's very hard for Geb to save that target. Um, and we think that this will kind of put it into that position. Do you think that Geb will now be countered picked? Like he still seems like a pretty strong and almost like still top pick guardian. Yeah, no, I think he's still very very strong. It's just mm -hmm. that his matchup against Bacchus is quite a bit worse now. So Bacchus and a few other like you I mean, know warriors. Hubwa and, and you know there, there's knockups are very powerful. Uh, mm -hmm. They're almost this kind of superior type of type of CC and Smite, given its interaction with purges and CC immunity. Um, and that if he's going to be strong against all CC, perhaps he shouldn't be strong against one type. Okay. While purging all the others. And we're still looking into everything, guys. I mean, all of these changes, you know. This is all going to PTS, obviously. Uh, yeah. We will potentially reevaluate it. But with Gebs, we feel pretty certain this is the right change to Geb. All yes, right, Kelly, take it away. So, uh... My, my one true love, Hell, this is going to be a pretty significant change, and we talked a little bit about actually adding a nerf to this as well because mm -hmm. we're a little bit afraid. Her ultimate, uh, the recovery time has been reduced from 1 second to 2.2 2 seconds. Right. Not 2.2, 2, 2, 2 seconds. That's very, very fast. It'll allow you to, in positions where you are doing damage, you're in your dark stance, and someone's about to come in you and CC you, you can switch 0.2 seconds later, lay down your light stance too, and get out yeah, of trouble. Prob probably the biggest piece. So, so to be perfectly clear, this is the time after you stance switch before you can cast an ability has been changed. That's um, right. What has not changed is the cooldown on stance switching. That is still two seconds. Mm -hmm. So once you switch stances, you can't do it again for two seconds, but you can fire an ability much faster after switching stances. A lot faster. Um, basically, the idea here is that Hell is a, is a really strong laner, mm -hmm. and that kind of once the laning phase ends, I mean, obviously she's susceptible to ganks without any, uh, any kind of movement abilities, but we'll get to that in a second. But kind of once the lane breaks, what she really does is she controls the tempo of the fight by kind of swinging the HP value. She does big AoE damage and big AoE heals. Mm -hmm. uh, being able to do that faster should make her more effective. Oh, without a doubt. And again, everyone, we are uh, looking into this. Uh, we're talking with some of the developers. They were asking what kind of nerfs that we should, uh, should we add to her. And for right now, we're not putting a nerf onto her. Right. Just a buff. And we're going to see how she does. And especially now that Nox is coming in, and I know a lot of people said that she was, you know, the anti-hell. We'll see how this kind of, you know, we'll evens see. out. We'll see. Yeah. But I mean, like, you look at um, gods like Thanatos that will, and Thor that just eat hell. So yeah. um, it's going to be still probably pretty tough to run her effectively in the solo lane in high level play, but she should be a bit stronger. Um, we'll, we'll go through a couple more here. Giannis's thresholds. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, let me uh, let me just quickly say that Hell's stance switching will not reset her basic attack progression. So Chainsaw Hell not coming back. Aww. Giannis, however, his threshold, uh, you'll now get visual effects 
uh, on allies when they get the speed buff. So before they just got faster, now you'll get the swirlies. Uh, Naja has a fixed clap emote. Nice buff for Naja. And uh, Ra is getting a bit of a nerf. Yeah, so Ra has been a um, really, Top really powerful player. god kind of all of his time in spite. He's, he's actually Easily. seen a lot of nerfs over the last three years. Um, for those of you that are new to the game, Ra's heal used to give him additional magical power standing inside of it and things like that. I mean, he was really, really potent. All right, so what you're looking at here is basically a nerf that is targeted at um, making Ra's what little downsides he has, mm -hmm. more of downsides. Okay. So when you look at Ra, his strengths are he's this hybrid utility burst mage. He's, he's bursty, he's also high utility. Um, he also is extremely fast, and he also has a very long, persistent AoE slow. Okay. His biggest downside is he doesn't have a true escape ability. Mm -hmm. um, so what the nerfs are that are coming in here is that we're trying to amplify his weaknesses again here. Remember, guys. Movement speed bonus per stack of his passive has been reduced from 8% to 6%, so going from 24 top end to now 18% top end. And Divine Light has had its slow now ticks every 0.5 seconds instead of every 0.3. And its magical damage scaling has been reduced from 40% to 30%. So Divine Light eating some nerfs. Uh, the detonation of the slow will not be as powerful, nor will the slow that it stacks. So his mobility and chase down has been nerfed, but his burst and his you know sustaining That's has right. stayed he the same. He should be a little bit easier to kill. Okay. Is kind of is generally what you're looking at here. He's not going to be as good at slowing targets and and kind of speeding himself up. Mm -hmm. uh, Sun Wukong, your favorite god, is getting a a little bit of a buff. His uh, very targeted buff here. Yes. So his magic cudgel, uh, cudgel, this ability now does an extra 20% damage to minions and jungle camps. So instead of having him as a viable solo lane or a viable support, this seems to be more focused towards jungling. Uh, yes and no. Um, so what you're looking at is 20% additional damage to minions, lane minions, as well as jungle. Yes. So um, it actually positions him a little bit better in the solo role. Mm. Um, so magic cudgel does 240 damage. Uh, with additional 20%, it will put you over that magic 250 number that lets you kill minions with a single cast. So max rank magic cudgel builds will now be uh, a bit more powerful okay. um, as a solo laner. Uh, also does help out a bit with your, your jungle clear. But uh, one thing here that you know isn't quite as obvious is that so minion hit reactions. So when you hit a minion, normally they kind of reel back before they look to fire again. None of Sun Wukong's abilities were doing that. Um, just kind of an oversight, basically. So by adding hit reactions to the Magic Cudgel, Master's Will, his AoE spell, as well as the Summersault Cloud, which is less important, basically this means he's going to be taking less damage. Because now when he uses the Magic Cudgel or Master's Will, the archers will have to reset before they fire again. Mm -hmm. So he will be taking less damage overall in the lane, which should make him more resilient, better as a solo mm -hmm. laner, and better as a jungler, potentially. So uh, small targeted nerfs to Wukong to make him better versus bots. Fair enough. Uh, and he has an updated Dark Lord skin to play uh, additional voice lines. So a few of his what, what? voice lines were missing there. <laughs> Uh, tier. Tier, uh, the final uh, real adjustment here on our list. Um, power Cleave and his Guard Stance. This is the one that heals you. So, no more tiers, only Cleave now is kind of the, uh, the idea here. Um, tier will now double his healing on the first target that he hits, and will get an additional stack per enemy. So, it used to be that you would heal the same amount off of all up to three enemies. Now, you will heal double off of the first. Mm -hmm. Given that his healing has been reduced at the base by five, um, this does end up being a, I think, uh, I think it's about 110 additional healing at max rank. Okay. But really what this means is that in a 1v1 fight, Tyr is going to be able to heal much more off of that single target, mm. which is a lot, a big part of his downside. Because once the lanes break, he doesn't have access to multiple minions to heal off of. Okay, fair enough. And uh, Jean Quay has a few changes with Expose Evil, uh, an updated tooltip correctly, stating that 40% of the remaining damage is done instantly instead of 50%. That's right. And, uh, and that does kind of conclude our patch notes from a balanced perspective. We'll be moving in to take a look at all of the content in the game here. But before we do get to that, I'm going to go ahead and publish this bad boy onto the Reddit. That's right. And uh, after the patch notes are done, everyone, it will be posted onto the forums, forums.smygame.com. But, uh, so what do you think is the biggest change here out of all the god nerfs and buffs? Um, Geb? Oof. That's, oof, that's tough. Hell? The hell one's pretty big. It is. Um, it, it just changes a lot. I think it's probably the most impactful in terms of, like, the play style. Mm, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a little bit more different in that regard. Than, uh, than it is kind of the some of the other ones are adjustments right like tier tier probably is going to do pretty well with this buff um, Ra's buff it kind of nerf 
or sorry, yeah, Ra's nerf. Jerry's a little out on that, exactly how effective that's going to be. Mm -hmm. He still will be pretty powerful as a mid laner. may hurt him a bit as a solo. Um, but Hells changes a lot about the actual, like, way you would play her. That's true. Yeah, I could imagine him not being played as much in solo because he doesn't have much mobility. He can't rotate as well in the mid lane. you got to stay there for the mid camps. You still have sustain and damage. All right, I can agree with that. Yeah, I can see it. So I'm trying to get this thing up Do there Do you for think you guys. Uh, any of these gods are going to be seen more or less in competitive play? Uh, I mean, my expe expectations would be that it would be hell that you would maybe see off of this, off of this change here. Yeah? I, th you think, I mean, maybe. You think we'd see hell in the solo lane? Maybe. I'm, I'm, you seem so unsure about that. It, I am. I mean, I, it's... She still doesn't have, like, escape ability. you got to be really safe with her in the early game and ward a bunch because if the jungler tries to gank you, you're done. Like, it's like what you say, right. Thanatos, Bakasura, and Thor can just shred her. Yeah, that's the hardest thing for her. It is. Is that she has a very hard time dealing with those types of gods. Sorry, guys, I'm looking at it. But she there. might be more of a mid to late game kind of god. You know, just stay back, be a little bit safe, and then... Yeah, maybe she fits into a little bit of a kind of pushing heal comp, perhaps, a little mm. bit better. But I think just... She always was a very strong laner, similar to, like, Anubis. Just kind of had issues dealing with team fights. Yeah, fair enough. So hopefully that, that helps her out a little bit, guys. Uh, let's see, I am making the post to the Reddit now. The one who knocks. As a quick patch reminder, notes. everybody, the uh, PTS should be going live tomorrow morning, and the patch should go live Wednesday morning, I believe, around 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. Eastern. But things are subject to change, especially depending on how the PTS goes. If there's some major issues or something wrong with some of the god nerfs and buffs, we might delay the patch being uh, sent out to go live. But I'm excited. I'm excited for this hell change. Patches are available, guys. The link is in your... On my Twitter. I'm not logged into Twitch here, so go to Twitter. Deal with it. Hi, Res Bart. You can find it there or on Reddit. R Smite. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, move into the game. Uh, well, actually, before we do that, talk real quickly about the North American land coming up. That's right. Uh, here towards the end of November, guys. Tickets are available. If you are still interested in attending, it will be here in Atlanta. So uh, be sure to come on by. You can find all that information, of course, on our website, esports.highrestudios.com. Or hirestudios.com slash esports or esports.smitegame.com. I believe the European like tickets it. are already sold out. European tickets are sold out. They got sold out within like a few days. <gasps> oh, oh, hey. There we go. 20 tickets available for Europe. Breaking just news. Added. Yeah, this just in. Uh, 20 more tickets available for Europe, guys. But with that, let's go ahead and move into the game client. Take a look at Nox and all of her resplendent glory. There she is, her oh, she loading screen. She looks so screen. cool. She's so elegant. I mean, I, this is one of my favorite female models since Chonga. The way that her dress flows and moves, it's so elegant and pretty and just really well done. Just like you. Aww. <laughs> okay, let's Why go ahead and move into the game. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm sorry, production, I have to ask you to bring me back to our faces here. I'm not sure what we're going to see when we oh, log into true. this, and I don't want to give anything away I'm not supposed to. My track record with that is not very good. So uh, I'll, I'll try to spare Almost the... Almost as bad uh, as your track record against Robot. Nah, let's not go there. All right. We're going to see exactly how good that is here in just a moment. But, um, I mean... All things holy, yeah. Nox, Nox, pretty sweet looking. Do you? I mean, sweet looking and her really cool. Do you think that she is going to be viable in competitive play and like high level play right from the get go? Yeah. She seems very. Yeah, niche. probably. I mean, probably. It, she's a strong counter pick, especially to Habwa. She's a she's a counter pick to Hell. She's a counter pick to Ra. Who else could she be a counter pick? Anything to? that wants to spam abilities. Uh, Stance switcher. She's good against Hubwas. Oh, um, that's true. I would imagine like she Rom. wouldn't she wouldn't do too well against hunters though. It seems. No, no, no. Her her biggest downside is going to be dealing with physical DPS mm -hmm. uh, from in hands. She is really strong against people that are using abilities. She is not really strong against people that are just like on her. That's just do you think we're going to see her around. more in the solo lane or the mid lane? Uh, ooh, probably. Mid? You'd think so. I th I think, yeah. I think so. Um, but yeah, so we should be able to move into game here, guys, uh, in, in just a second. Let's. Uh, Actually, you should log in here. Why should I log in here? Because I don't think I have GM. <laughs> okay, let me lift this keyboard here. Nothing's, nothing's gone wrong. Nothing at all. It's all, it's all perfect. There we go. All right, now we can move into the game, guys. <laughs> as we move on in, we'll be taking a look at Nox, of course, as well as the, all the new skin cards and all the fun stuff coming in. So let's go ahead and move right on into game. Take it away. All right, I will. So as you guys can see right here, here is Nox. We're going to start off with her uh, typical skin, but I'm going to buy the voice pack, which Bart always forgets. And I'm also going to buy the recolor, but I'm just going to use her normal skin to start off with. Oh, she looks... She looks like an anime female Hades. No? You disagree? Her hair's pretty anime. 
anime female ladies. Yeah. Okay, sure. Like if we were to do a gender bitter anime episode, you know, that would be that would be it. Yeah, well, let's take a look at Nox here, as uh, as she is going to be going after the the robot, of course. Uh, well, you know, all things told, here, uh, first thing, let's let's take a look at a recall animation. And away she goes. Uh, wow, it sounds much better in this headset. We, me and Kelly have swapped places behind the scenes, guys. Just yes, so you know, sorry. That, that's what went down. Uh, well, let's take a look at at Miss uh, Miss Knox here. We'll took a little ability here. You won't. We won't be going through much audio here because this one doesn't have the hookups, unfortunately. But uh, let's take a look at her K screen. That's probably what the goods that you guys are looking for. So look at Shadow Barrier. This ability is a 90% damage mitigation for a second um, at max rank. So very, very effective against casters. You'll see her passive is that she will all abilities cast uh, near her. So friendly or enemy is what I'm reading here. Gives her a light on her candle. And once the candle has uh, all four of its, or the candelabra has all four of its candles lit, she does get her next ability cast for free. The Nightfall Raven is dealing 140 damage, uh, applying the debuff for five seconds, and silencing for one. Siphon Darkness is the uh, kind of delayed burst three. That will be dealing 120 damage, but it doubles the damage in the instance in that when it is applied, or has, I'm sorry, the Shroud of Darkness applied. So you'll see here, Ra is not going to be too happy about what's going down as, uh, well, he's going to take it pretty good. But let's uh, let's see if we can get the Spell Shield to work here, and let's let's go ahead and ult him and see what we can do about that. So he's not casting any more abilities, but he ain't, he ain't very happy. Now I've silenced him. Let's see if we can get him to cast, and I can use my Spell Shield here to do something about it. Come on, buddy. Come on. I know you want to. There we go. So you'll see it'll mitigate only the first hit of uh, dot abilities, especially like that one there. So um, now... Let's uh, go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and like maybe set myself back to level one. Go back to the base with my max rank abilities and uh, make it happen. Now, of course, that's not going to be the case, but you can kind of see exactly how Nox is going to work. Now, let's go ahead and get your audio working here, guys, uh, to that one, I assume. And uh, I hear nothing. <laughs> we'll try the next one. We did a great job today preparing for this one, guys. Woohoo! Nope, not that one. Let's try the last one. Last one? Is that it? I hear sound. I hear sound too, so I would imagine that everyone else can hear sounds. We just can't hear it as loudly as they can. Uh, I think that's the case. Yeah, I assume we have sound now, guys. So um, we'll go through her jokes and taunts. I'll run to the jungle and, and do... Okay. Uh, well, there's Nox for you. Um, she's looking pretty strong, I, I think. I mean, overall, she has a lot of... Very, very good tools for dealing with these types of mages like Ra. Um, her clear seems pretty good as well. I think. Sorry, guys. This seems that there's some issues with audio and production, and we're looking into it right now, so we won't be able to hear her VGS system or the sound effects for her abilities, but just bear with us, everyone, while we look into the issue. But we can stare at how uh, nice her abilities look and how nice she looks. Well, look Do you think we're going to get a Christmas knock skin? Let's be honest. She lo she looks like a Christmas tree. Oh, okay. I was like, I have no idea where you're going with that. If if her dress is like a green fern with like those lights around it, like come on. Why not? It's it's setting it. No, it has to be. We need a we need a Christmas sure. knock skin. I'm about to look at this ability, man. This thing's on such short cooldown. Not a lot of damage. Eggnox. The harass is real. <laughs> Eggnox. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. I can get behind that. The delay is a little tough to deal with though. On that ability. Hmm. Interesting. I haven't played a lot of Knox, if you couldn't tell. I'm kind of learning as as I go here, guys. But she's pretty neat, I think. Um, so, yeah, t talk about more practical applications here. Obviously, the two and the three is wave clear is going to be pretty strong. Um, kind of hit all those things, stack them up again, cast the ability, boom, it detonated, taking a lot of damage as the raw. He is not going to be too happy about that. You can see my shield not going to be that effective against uh, the raw bot as he doesn't like to use really good abilities, only his his heal. <laughs> what, is, what are you doing? Crazy guy. But yeah, you can see the detonation on that ability is uh, is fairly delayed, but it is on such a short cooldown, man. Like, the harass is going to be really difficult to deal with, which is kind of why I think she's maybe more positioned as a mid laner, right? Just because, like, the harass is going to be so good. You think a harassment would be better in the mid lane than a solo lane? Why? Well, just, like, the wave clear plus harass. It's, it's kind of reminiscent to me of a Scylla almost in lane, like with Crush. Um, but I do think she's going to struggle early game. Um, uh, quite a bit, in fact. But let's see if we can get my Candelabra lit from the raw bot here. Oh, it looks like uh, I already got it. Okay, I got the passive early on there. So, yeah, uh, any any questions about Nox? Ooh, 
what? All right, everyone, we're <laughs> hearing. Uh, we're, I, I believe he means from like this right here, Bart. Uh, okay. The playback settings. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> uh, looks like we're coming to cams, guys. Sorry, sorry, we're uh, a little bit out of sorts here today. You can see we've we've uh, we've swapped our positions as well. Let's see here. I assume that's what we were looking for. Uh, hopefully, we have sound of game. No, no, we don't. Looks like I, it's not plugged in. I hear it coming from no, your computer. The, the monitor is literally playing the sound in the studio right now. That's oh. what's going down. So maybe I can like put my head really close here, and that's gonna work. Interesting. Um, all, right. all right. Apparently, we have we have my audio. I can't hear it, so bear with me. I'm going to go through the jokes and taunts, guys, for Knox. Let's go ahead and listen to him now. There's a reason people fear the night. Come find out for yourself. I'll expose the darkness from within you. Do you really think you can overcome the night? You're never truly alone in the dark. And her jokes. There's a reason people fear the I lied, night. I that's a taunt. Here's a joke. Come find Power out for yourself. I am the one who knocks. I meant Nyx. I mean Nox. Ah. Hey. I am the night. Who turned out the lights? Oh, yes. That was me. I am the night. Now let's listen to our abilities now. As old Robot here. <laughs> Consume. No one likes you, Robot. Boom! Get out of here. But yeah, I mean, look at that. She's uh, not a lot of damage coming out of these abilities. You really gotta, you really gotta sync the two with the three. It feels like to like get really good, kind of clear out of her. Mm. Excellent, excellent. Darkness. I like her. She sounds You're regal, stunning. but evil, like a Maleficent. Yeah. You're stunning. You're stunning. <laughs> I don't think that was a good impression. Oh, is that not good? Is that not what you're looking for? There you saw. So, I took 32 damage from Ra's Divine Beam there. Let's see. Yeah, so I, I mitigated 334 damage of that ability with my one. 90% damage from negation. So, pretty dang good if you have good timing. It's a pretty short active window, though. Just a second. Silence. And getting the timing of that ability right is kind of tricky as well. Uh, obviously, not the hardest thing in the world, but... Uh, it does require a little bit of uh, aiming. As you can see, it's it, you know, only doing about 100 damage at a time. It's not really that effective at clearing, but the silence is good. Damn it, Robot. Uh, we'll make sure that my audio settings are all correct here, guys, for you. Uh, no, everything looks hunky-dory to me. So, uh, we have a bunch of skins also in this patch. Uh, so we can go ahead and take a look at all of that, the recolors and whatnot. So, uh, I guess first, let's, uh, let's take a look at... Her, uh, her defeat screen. Oh. Why not? Why not go there? I like it. And then we're going to see her win screen after that. And then, everyone, we're going to be looking into the new uh, skins that we see through the Odyssey, the Agni, and Rom. And we're going to be uh, looking at a few of the voice, uh, new voice packs as well. <sighs> oh. The birds of night. Oh. See, so they'll take me right back in. Yeah. I don't think you let it play all the way through. Uh, let's take a look at the Ugly. Agni skin. I'm excited for that one. Where are you, buddy? Why? We need to purchase all the items in the Odyssey. Why, you know? Oh, right. Bart. Man, why you gotta, you gotta make it all hard on me. We'll, look, we'll take a look at Golden Cabracken next, guys. Yeah, I should be able to switch right into it. Infernal Agni, right? That's the name of the skin, I believe. Time to burn. So let's see. Let's see if we can take a look at it. Ooh! <laughs> look at this! Oh my gosh, he looks like the Human Torch! It looks so cool! Isn't that cool? <gasps> oh, the graphics are amazing! Look at that booty! I love the effects! I love the butt! Oh yeah, he's got a nice booty! <laughs> look at this junk! Oh man, he's killing Bart, it! Jesus Christ! Boom, baby. Bring the heat. He's a little more, <gasps> like, his spells are a little more black-rimmed, you can see? Yeah, his, his voice pack actually sounds relatively <laughs> similar to, uh... Such a ball yeah, he's a little more, a uh, little more jovial. Yeah. Aha! That was very bad, also. It was. That's right, Robot. Get dunked on. Yeah, this skin's really sweet, I think. So, if you guys are just joining us right now to get that skin, 
you're going to have to... Oh, if I could find it. Uh, it's, it's 12 items in the Odyssey. That's right. 12 items in the Odyssey. And the next thing that we're going to be looking into is the uh, next Odyssey item, which is the Orbital Strike ROM. So if you purchase 12 items in the Odyssey, you will get this skin for free. You will indeed. Uh, you want to take a look at Orbital Strike ROM? Let's do it. See if we can get right into him. Wait, what about his, like, taunts and jokes and everything? Oh. Oh. Jeez Louise, Kelly. What? I'm sorry. All right. Uh, he has new voice lines. Yeah, let's listen to him. Uh, so his taunts. You're such a baller. I mean, that's you, Rock. But here's his taunts. No one told me I'd be up against a bunch of losers. Ooh! Ooh, jeez. You want some of this? <laughs> Everyone does. Does he draw a flaming line in the sand? Yeah. Go hot or go home. Yeah. All right, some jokes. Guys, is, is it hot in here? Your middle tower is under attack. Me. You want to hear a joke? Your skill. Get it. You also wear gloves, because really, I am too hot to handle. Great job. Fire Great job. puns. You want to hear a joke? Your skills. Let's see if it's orbital. Hmm. Let's try one more. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Look at him. What a cool guy. Oh, he's so cool. So this is the next item in the Odyssey, everyone, <laughs> for the is. Hindu Pantheon. Orbital Strike Rom. That's my dude. Woot! <laughs> you rock. Wait! Woot! We seem to be a pretty big fan of the we new, do like, like the, woot. The, the robo, like, futuristic skins. Well, we look seem how to be cool a, it is. It is really cool. Your ordinary arrows. You can't hide behind your allies. Can't hide behind allies. You hear it here first. I'm coming for you. Very cool stuff there. Big fan of this. All right, let's take a look at his arrows. Get a little bit of that purple sheen. Two buff, uh, very similar there. And the orbital strike. Ooh. Very cool stuff. Where's his back look like? Oh, same. With a with a blue hue added to it. Ooh, and lines. Oh, that's Can you so do the, cool. the, the uh, laugh? Ha. Oh, well, that was... Ha! <laughs> ha. He gave you one. <laughs> Damn it, Robot, come out from your hole. Come here, buddy. So, are we going to be able to look at the Water Dancer Nua? Yeah, sure, why not? All right. Oh, look at his arrows. See that? Hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what is They're that? They're like sweet tech arrows. Oh. <laughs> Have you ever seen Attack on Titan? Yeah. I'm just going to take that as a yes. Yeah, he kind of looks like one of those characters. Like if, if his, uh, oh, God, I forgot the name of it. His arrow pack. Good Lord. Sheath? A quiver? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if he had his quiver no, on both sides, I know. If he had his quiver on both sides, he'd look like someone from Attack on Titan. All right, all right. All right, 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 right. right Nuwa. Water dancer? Is that right? Yeah, look at it. It's a sweet recolor. Yeah. Like most of the skins. Let's take a look at our effects here. That obviously not much changing there. The Mim Mims. Mim Mims, same. Looking normal. Get blown up. A little bit purple there. Yeah, a little purple. Look at your crystal shards. Well, let's go make our way up to the uh, the old robot. That looks pretty much the same to me. Let's not call attention to ourselves. Not in <laughs> let's not call attention to ourselves, homie. Anything else that I missed, Kelly? Oh, Kabrakin. Yes, Kabrakin has a gold, legendary, and diamond skin. We have the windscreen for Nox that we could look at. There he is. Golden Kabrakin. My friends. I bet Diamond Kabrakin looks gold. really cool. With his, like, shoulder, like, scales. Aww. Yeah, no, those aren't gold. Legendary Kabrakin. More of the same. And let's look at Diamond. Ooh, yeah. 
Oh, not Diamond there. Ooh, but Diamond Cabracken looks pretty Diamond Cabracken does look pretty scary. Fat Loki looking good today. Fa so explain to me Fat Loki. Okay. Right now. Um, he's fat. Uh huh. And he does damage. Oh, whoa, Cabracken's not fat. He's large. Okay. All right, so watch this. I'm watching. Nice. Let's just say that I have these couple of items. I have that. Let's say I have a, let's see, maybe a Void Stone. And one of these. So I got a couple hundred that magic power. <laughs> <laughs> That's not that much. I mean, 200 magic power, basically. Uh, That's a reasonable amount to have it uh, in the mid game. So, um, basically, you find somebody. Obviously, I'm level 20, but you run at them. You hit them with that. You hit them with that. And you hit them with that, and it does a lot of damage. But Robot is too strong for me to kill, as you noticed. Oh, and so he's called Fat Loki. That's right. Because it's. Why couldn't you call him, like, Buff Loki? Because he's fat like Loki. Fair enough. Let's look at the uh, Nox windscreen. Alright. And let it play what was, out, Bart. What's the name of her alternate skin? Her alternate skin is called Crimson, Crimson. Eclipse. So here's oh. the Nox recolor. Oh my gosh, I love the red tint on the, yeah, uh, the end of the feathers. Effects still the same, boys. But we need to win with her, right? Let's go find a win. Bum, ba -da -bum, ba -da -bum, ba -da -bum, ba -da bum We'll go kill the robot. Ooh, I'm on your Twitter. Ooh, congratulations. Chat, what should I tweet out from Bart's Twitter? You want, you want to play that game, Kelly? No, I don't. I oh, so. you reached 40,000 followers on Twitter! Oh my god, I'm famous now. e -fame. Let's build some towers. To all the people that are quoting me on Arrow Sheath, we all have brain farts, all right? That is a pretty accurate depiction. If you're not allowed to use the word quiver, Arrow Sheath, Arrow sheath. is the closest thing Arrow you Arrow Sheath's can. pretty good. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. You have... Oh, my God. Was that me? You have slain an enemy. The Nox windscreen from within the wall. There we go. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ooh, look at the victory. I know, the new victory thing. That was <gasps> oh, as well. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's it has the petals. Oh. Shut up. I like it. Kawhi. <laughs> and Nox windscreen. Oh. <gasps> oh. It's like Luigi's Mansion. Oh, it is. <gasps> <laughs> she plays Denton dress up. Phenomenal cosmic power. Oh, look at the brain! Ah! <laughs> that is awesome. That is pretty cute. And that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, will conclude our patch note preview for today. Uh, thank you for joining us. Any final thoughts, Kelly, before we let all the fine people go about their day? PTS should be going live early tomorrow, everyone, and the patch should be going live on Wednesday. Yeah, no longer Tuesdays, but again, things are subject to change depending on how the PTS goes. It might depend on what a... Uh, uh, the changes with the bur nuffs, or nerfs and buffs or the new uh, nuffs and burfs, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Curly. <laughs> and that is going to conclude our patch Thank show today, guys. Have a great rest of your Friday. We'll see you all uh, this weekend for the remainder of the wild cards and PTS. Be sure to check that out. Patch, as Kelly said, should be hitting Wednesday. Much love. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Give your feedback on Reddit, Twitter, wherever you can find us. Uh, Kelly, you can find at HiRes Kelly. You can find me at HiRes Bart. And we'll talk to you soon. Have a great rest of your Friday. I bid you adieu. Adieu.
Hey guys, welcome to the Patch Notes Review. I'm going to be stealing some of the lime, uh, limelight from Pon Pon here, yep. who usually does it. He has uh, invited me to join you. And we're going to be talking about the One Who Knocks patch, which will be going live sometime next week. Yeah, we're expecting maybe Tuesday, Thursday, or Tuesday to Wednesday, as long as there's no huge complications. But yeah, so normally I do the Patch Notes Analysis show in the green screen closet, where I just kind of sit there hunched over and, and talk about numbers. But we got Cret here, so I decided to take that advantage. He's an amazing analysis person. So, so. I'm going to sit here hunched over, <laughs> and let's talk about some numbers. And uh, Nox is going to be a new goddess coming into the game, mm -hmm. fulfilling a sort of mage role, uh, but with a little bit of a different flair from some of the other mages mm -hmm. from the game. So she's, well, first of all, her passive. Uh, yeah, it's basically meant to... She's kind of the anti-caster in a sense, right? She yeah. has the, anyone who casts around me is helping me out by giving me the clear casting. I have a way to avoid ability damage. I have a silence built in. I have really quick cooldown poke. And if you try and cast around me, I could potentially just damage you for a lot repetitively. Right, so what it comes down to is she has got four abilities. Let's bring up the patch notes and take a quick look on those. Uh, Shadow Barrier, her one, is going to be one of the larger abilities uh, for this character. And um, so this is flat damage reduction mm -hmm. on a single ability hit. And what that means is that it's going to be 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90% to, let's say, Raw Celestial Beam or Raw Searing yeah. Pain. But if you if Raw combos you with Celestial Beam into Searing Pain, it will only reduce one of those. Yeah. So it's not meant to be able to completely mitigate all damage. You're not getting anything huge major out of it. But if, like... Like a hebo is ulting towards you. Normally, that's going to completely destroy a mage, especially yeah. because, because mages are pretty squishy in general. Um, and so this is like your way of kind of surviving that and making sure you can stay close, which she needs to. Yeah, she definitely does. Definitely a shorter, shorter, uh, shorter range mage. And it's also important to note that basic attacks are also mitigated for the entire mm -hmm. duration, which in some ways makes this actually a little bit better against uh, physical characters. Mainly hunters, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunters for sure. Hey, but like even Bakasura, yeah. right? I, I don't think it will reduce the true damage. It shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, but it, it will reduce the actual auto attacks, Actually, which I'm still not sure hit. on that because uh, true damage is mitigated by percent damage reduction. Yeah, but I I think it only applies to the um, auto attacks. Either way. Yeah, either we'll way. See. Well, that, that, that's something that I'm That's something I'm to think sure. about looking forward. And um, so Nox also will cleanse roots and slows. Yes. It's not a full cleanse, but being able to remove roots and slows can be very beneficial. We see this on Ao Kuang Slither, not with the roots, but with the slows. Yeah, so this this kill is like multifaceted. It seems straightforward on the front, and you really can kind of just use it however you need to. Do I need it for the root slows? Do I need it to reduce in hand damage? Mm -hmm. Do I need to avoid that heat bolt? Um, it should be a pretty strong skill. Uh, let's let's go into the next skill, and then we'll talk about level order. Sure, and stuff. sure, and and that's definitely something to consider here. I feel like this is going to be a character where you have options in level yeah. order, which is always really cool. So the next skill, Nightfall Raven, is really important for her kit, and uh, what that's going to do is it shoots out a line mm -hmm. nuke. It's it's got sort of like a decent range, I think around 55, so around a standard range for an ability. Doesn't do that much damage, but it silences and applies a Shroud of Darkness, which is an effect that uh, coincides with her third ability. Yeah, so this is kind of 
probably her best wave clear tool and also kind of her utility to outplay sure. opponents. Uh, silencing for one second. Science just in general is kind of how you can stop multiple skills, put the enemy in a bad spot, disrupt their combo chain, everything like that. And so Nightfall Raven just on its own doesn't do that much damage. You're not going to be looking to kill really anyone with it, but you're looking to set up with it. Yeah, definitely. You're setting up for your real... And, and it's sort of weird saying this, real damage ability, which is Siphon Darkness, despite the fact that it has 120 base damage and 40% scaling. Now, these numbers are subject to change mm -hmm. through the um, through what happens in the PTS. But the idea is there of a low damage ability, except if you hit someone who's Shrouded in Darkness, it double hits. Yes. So this is kind of the... It, it's It's... The straightforward combo. It's Siphon yeah. Darkness spam as much as you can. The cooldown is very short, three seconds. Yes. So this is this is a skill that you're really not worried ever to toss out there. You're pretty much going to be spamming it out there. The mana cost is low enough that you can kind of do that. In the middle of a fight, your Flame of Night passive is going to make sure that you can kind of keep that going. But it's a very straightforward combo with the Nightfall Raven. Yeah. You science them. They can't move. use any movement dash skills. Really easy to land. Um, and it's a, it's not that strong of a skill in terms of just the burst damage sure. potential. But it can very it can stack up very fast. Yeah, especially because it's such a big area of effect. So let's compare it a little bit to some of the other low cooldown mage abilities. We've got uh Kronos's Time Rift, mm -hmm. Habwa's Water Cannon, and Chunga's uh Crescent Moon Dance. Uh pretty much all of her skills. <laughs> well, pretty much all of her skills, but uh, yeah, more the Crescent Moon Dance, the least utility move there is yes. uh for Chunga. And it's sort of like an interesting trade off. Like Kronos does high damage. Longer cooldown, very small yes. out of those. You've got Habwa that does very high damage, but is super short range. And then you've got Shunga, where it's a big range, good damage, but longer cooldown. This is long range, big area, short cooldown, so the damage is really weak. Yeah, so whereas someone like Hebo is going to go forward, and he has to make that conscious decision, I need to go forward here to mm -hmm. do this damage, likely he's going to set that up with his knock-up, and he's going to kite down with his two. Uh, Chang'a still needs to get in there. Like Everyone kind of has their own different play style. This is, you're just going to be spamming it, which is, I think, probably the newest feature about this god. If yeah. you don't really have any character that has this one skill that's such low cooldown that you can spam it, and it, you're never really in a bad spot for spamming it. Yeah, I mean, I'd say the only consideration, and this is really, like, really? <laughs> trying to find something, is with her passive, mm -hmm. it does seem a little bit more beneficial to use her passive on the two instead of the uh, the one, or, yeah, sorry, the uh, two or the ultimate yes. over the three, because it's just a lower mana cost ability. But it the really idea of a clear casting passive is it just increases your efficiency in general. Yeah, it really just comes down to how mana efficient is this god going to be. And, I mean, if you're spamming nothing but threes on its cooldown, you're going to go oom pretty quickly. Sure. But the Flames of Night, obviously, if you're in a fight and people are trying to heal up and sustain that poke damage, you, uh, probably around every third or fourth, if you're just spamming on cooldown, oh, yeah. it's free. So it's beneficial there. Sure, you'd want to use on the higher mana cost ones if you can. Mm -hmm. um, I think overall, for a lot of players, it's really going to come down to, uh, I just have this passive up and I happen to use it on this ability, and I don't think there's really any bad ability to use it on. All right, well, let's talk about the ultimate and take a look mm -hmm. once again at the patch notes. This is definitely an intricate ability and a new ability. So it fires out a projectile, links with the first player it hits, deals damage to that player at a fairly decent scaling, but a very low value, uh, very low base value. And then while linked, the enemies will take the same amount of damage again every time they use an ability. Nox's cooldowns are also reduced by 5 seconds, which is definitely very good for her 1 or her 2. And so this ability does two things. It punishes players for using abilities if they're forced to use them for whatever reason, or it just stops players from using abilities. So there's actually a... At first... It might seem, and, and this was uh, both of our gut reactions, mm -hmm. it might seem a little bit counterintuitive that there's a silence and an ability that yes. wants you to cast. But I think there's a little bit more into it, right? Like, her one reduces the damage of basic attacks from hunters, so if you hit them with Night Terror and then use your one, they don't have any way to really make it, to remove your one mm -hmm. by hitting you with an ability. Yes. And so, so Night Terror, we, we were kind of discussing this earlier too, is she seems like... Uh, I think where she's going to fit, and this kind of ties into the ultimate itself, is she's sure. going to be very much a poke god into poke comps and a counter-engage god. Yeah. Because it's really hard to commit with her. Like, if you're going to go into a team and Night Terror, sure, you have the 90% the damage reduction, and sure, you have the science that you can toss on other people, 
but it's going to be really hard to actually get in there and stay linked to a yes. target. Whereas if you're poking, 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 and they're forced to engage on you, you can fall back, stay linked to people who are trying to engage forward and trying to be aggressive. I think that's really where she's going to come into her own. She also is pretty good at 1v1s because of the skill. Pretty much if you get into a 1v1 scenario and she night terrors you, you can't really fight back. You're going to have yeah. to find ways to break that link, maybe eat some damage to get out and then come back in. But she has a very strong way of stopping an engagement from happening. Definitely. Uh, the other thing, just to sort of create some context for how it feels to link to an opponent, um, imagine you're playing Aphrodite mm -hmm. and you're linking to that guy on the team that just, for whatever reason, doesn't want to be linked to you and he's like <laughs> running from you and making your life miserable. Yes. It's like that, except it's not a mistake. This guy actually doesn't want to be linked to you. Mm -hmm. So when someone's... like. In a team fight, Bakasura is diving you. If you link to him, mm -hmm. he's like, okay, well, I either break the link and don't do what I wanted to do in the first place, or I stay linked and take damage. But if you're trying to get onto their side of the team fight, it uh, like you link to like a, a ROM or whatever, mm -hmm. he's just going to be like, all right, I'm going to back up to my team. Chalk stands in front of me, and then Nox is just like, well, I can't walk through Chalk. Yes. And so, so it's going to come down to what's really going to make a great Nox is someone yeah. who can actually find the opportunity to root some or to hit someone with that Night Terror and really make it feel punishing. Because it's really easy for to, to link to someone and realize, yeah. oh, I have to actually get out of here and break it. And it's essentially kind of, not, I would say, uh, yeah, wasted. I think wasted is a good term. Well, especially because, I mean, this lasts five seconds. So yeah. it's five seconds of punishing you for using abilities. And yeah, it's essentially a five-second silence, depending on how much in danger the target is. Exactly. That's super scary. I mean, obviously, you use it on, like, a Guardian. They probably... Like, you use it on Geb, and he's mm -hmm. like, well, I'm still going to cast Stone Shield. Yeah. I don't really care. But if you use it on someone like Hell, and yeah. this is definitely relevant going uh, later to the patch notes, Hell doesn't want to spam her abilities yeah. anymore. And that's what the character does. So, Nox... And, I, and Stance Dance actually also yes. counts as an ability. So any character that has a Stance Dance feature yeah. is especially susceptible to this because really to make their kit effective, they have to be Stance Dancing a lot. Sure. And, you know, I mean, we mentioned earlier Nox sort of fitting into, the, like, the mm -hmm. spammy character area, like uh, Chunga, Habwa, also very good against those characters yes. because she generally has longer range than, like, even Kronos with long range doesn't, it's very hard to confirm from that mm -hmm. range. Whereas Siphon Darkness, I'd say roughly the same cast time, just like looking at the ability, mm -hmm. but much larger. Yeah, I, I would say if you were to try and equate it to a skill just so you kind of yeah. had the feel of it, it's about an Agni Meteor. You get the, si the thing yeah. on the ground, and then it pops up. So you, you can juke it, if, especially if you're, if you're very clear at juking it, but it's not incredibly easy to juke. Yeah, exactly. You have to get a little bit mind gamey. But mm -hmm. let's move on from Nox, and we'll talk about how she ties back in a little yes. bit later on. So, skins, very cool from this patch. We got that Oral Strike Rom, Odyssey, Ugh. Infernal Agni, which is definitely something. Uh, Water Dancer Nua, which is promotional. Kabrakin going gold, Legendary Diamond. And then the Crimson Eclipse, Nox, Recolor. So, a lot of skins coming yeah, in. Yeah, that's the one I'm going to be using the Crimson Eclipse. Oh, yeah. Black, red, favorite color scheme. It's a good color scheme for sure. I kind of like the original. Um, I can see it. But, I mean. Very cool character design either way. Uh, voice packs coming in, Orbital Strike Rom and Infernal Agni should be fun. Yes. Uh, country flags, so shout outs to <laughs> those countries. Congratulations. International icon, very yes. cool. A uh, whole bunch of emotes for. Yeah, Bastet waving, clapping, Chalk, Chonga, Kronos. <laughs> yeah. Lots of waving. Lots of waving, lots of clapping. All the stuff. Yeah. You know, every so often you see like the perfect use of one of these emotes. There was a. Uh, the Challenger Cup tournament I was casting, or a game, where this team, like, they knew they were going to lose. They were, like, Australian. They're playing against the top seeds. Like, they tried an all-in strategy. They failed. And at some point, Ymir ends up behind the opposing team somehow as his opponents are pushing a Phoenix. He just goes in the lane, and he just waves. <laughs> and they just... Yeah, that, came and murdered I, that's him. that's when I actually see the the wave happen the most. So oh like yeah, at the start of the game where like someone's sitting behind a tower. And oh, I like, love that. I know you're there. I'm just waving at you. Yeah, what's up, buddy? Yeah, what's or, up? Mid laners when they know the jungler's coming, just like yeah, you just turn, turn to the right, jungle like, and wave. What's up, jungler? <laughs> yeah, I had I like that, that worded. Yeah. Anyway, um, also updated card on Fen uh, Fenrir Frostfang. A few changes coming through in these miscellaneous ones mm -hmm. that uh, actually are going to affect the game a little bit more. I mean, you've got the improvements to the co-op AI, which is cool. A uh, new visual treatment for victory mm -hmm. and defeat, which actually is really cool. Yes. Um, daily logins. Yes. Which Incre increases everyone's incentive to log in, maybe play yeah. a game or two. You, the easy ones, I think mainly the, the point there is newer players who face the, the bots right now, they don't sure. really feel like 
they're learning too much. Right. Whereas n- now with the improvements to Easy, hopefully they'll get more of a learning experience and be able to move into games a little bit more knowledgeable about what's going on. Yeah, MOBAs can often be rather hard to learn at mm-hmm. first. Um, hopefully Smite... I, I feel like Smite's a little bit less dense than some of the other yeah. options, but still definitely difficult. Um, there's a few other changes that will sort of impact later. The fixed or rare issue where changing casting mode, etc., yeah, uh, it does come back. Cret has a, a nice story for when we get yeah, to that. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> um, in the item changes? That's pretty much all whether you can, when you can yeah. find them. So before it was like, I have sovereignty. And a lot of people know sovereignty gives health and, and protections. Sure. But they don't really equate that to magical protection because that's what the aura provides. Mm-hmm. And so now you can actually find it there. Ichabod gives physical power even though it's not actually a stat on it. Stuff like that. That's really what it what yeah. it comes down to. Very cool. Uh, Magic's blessing change is somewhat impactful yes. against Yenis and Freya. Yeah, it's it's kind of a an edge case. It doesn't really. It's not a massive thing against all gods, but Yenis and Freya, who are actually pretty common right now in terms of being mm-hmm. played, um, there'd be occasions where if you banish a target who's channeling, so think Guan Yu's uh, assault. You have Anubis breath, all that kind of stuff. That would be canceled, even though you have the Magi's blessing right. on you. Um, mostly for Guan Yu, this is probably more impactful because he's the one that generally gets the Magi's blessing yeah. on him. And so now that's fixed. So hopefully there won't be any channel interruptions. Right, and then the Odysseus bow new sound effects. This is actually slightly more impactful than you might expect, just because yes. it makes a good item feel good. Yeah. And so Odysseus bow has very strong uh, uses when you do buy it. It can actually do a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. It can bounce between two targets. And hopefully the sound effects will make people realize what that uh, bow is actually bringing to them. And, yeah. Before know, we had the... It was the uh, Zeus. It was Zeus. Yeah. And so that was also confusing for some players where oh, it was yeah. like, oh my, is there Zeus here? Where is Zeus? Yeah. Am I, where getting, is Zeus am, am, I getting, am I getting chained and about to be detonated? And yeah. so that's been hopefully addressed and fixed. All right. Let's jump into the gods. And the first big god change, AMC, is explained a little bit on these patch notes, but we'll go into a little bit deeper depth. It's only to a stinger and a a, a casting time reduction and then a physical damage increase. Now, increase on physical damage, late game hunter build, if you're building like super greedy, like a transcendence, maybe you're hitting for 350. Let's, Let's be devil advocates and say 400, right? Yeah. It's only a 40 damage increase on your ultimate... Yeah, Not that huge. and if you're getting to 400 physical power, you're building. You're trying really you're, hard. You're literally building every single physical power item in the game you can, and that's not a realistic. Yeah, build or like hunters. you have red buff and a red pot and a fire. Giant. Yeah, like so you're like, trying too hard. And so like even at that point, so I don't think the physical damage scaling is going to really make this skill incredible. It's gonna, especially early on, it's only going to be like right. five. Late game, it's going to be like 20 to 30 damage. The big thing here is the stinger, though. Yeah. And I, and, I was playing against AD Carried the other night, who's playing AMC. Sure. And every time he tried to use Stinger, he had to like preemptively assume what, where I was going. Yeah. So like there was times when I was going to go gank his lane, and he had a ward, and he would preemptively charge it to fire it at me. Now you can actually use it when you need to, and because it's a lot, it's quicker. It's going to be easier for a lot of people to hit. Like having to sit there and charge it and make and keep aiming is not as easy as just being able to fire out a skill. Yeah, definitely. It, it, it sort of felt like Popeye like winding up his punch, and <laughs> yeah. now that it'll come out a little bit faster, it'll have. A, I honestly, I think a little bit more punch to it. Stinger was an ability that actually was kind of really good, but mm-hmm. it just didn't feel that way because of how long it took to charge. But it's a nice burst of damage. It cripples your target, and in a duel between two hunters, the stinger can really make a big difference. So hopefully. I, I don't want to say this is going to straight up bring AMC back because he has other problems that I think are just sort of meta concerns. Like, he doesn't have a jump, and yeah. hunters kind of need a jump right now. Or some form of, uh, of straight up steroid for them yeah. to get away. Like, Artemis had the cleanse and the movement speed yep. increase. AMC, if, if he's without a hive, he's pretty much going to be slow. Yeah. And so he has a hard time getting away from things. This will help him. Stinger is, acts as a cripple, mm-hmm. so it can help people stop from chasing him. The other thing that's kind of impactful about the Stinger casting time reduced is late game, you want to be auto-attacking as much as you can. Yeah. And so the quicker you can actually get the Stinger out, the sooner you get back to auto-attacking. Yes, And that's, that's really the kind of, I, I think, one of the bigger components here. I think that's probably a bigger concern than the physical damage scaling increase. Well, the the other thing I just want to mention is in the laning phase, we don't see AMC's... They, they hold on to that stinger a lot more, mm-hmm. and maybe with this cast time reduction, we'd see you know some of the higher level players like Zatman or AD Carried mm-hmm. just firing that out in the laning phase because it's a cripple with a 15-second cooldown. If AMC is lane control, and you could hypothetically mm-hmm. hit it 
80% of the time, you can really use that for poke. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with that. Moving on to Bacchus, whose belly flop uh, occasionally would not deal damage when in a cripple. And now it should. Yeah, I believe this was partially addressed uh, last patch, which sure. was... So Leafs have had this issue where if you leap onto someone and you get knocked up right as you land, it wouldn't do anything. Yeah. I believe that was mostly addressed in the last patch. Um, and then this one now was if you land on a belly flop and there's a cripple there, Yeah. you wouldn't... You would not deal damage. I also believe it wouldn't knock up. I'm not 100% on that. It would not knock up. Yeah, that's Yeah, correct. and so... This actually really helps Bacchus because there's a lot of people who can lay down cripple effects. Yeah. Like, and generally, like, you have, like, the, like, Bacchusura who is chomping on your ADC inside his vomit. You try and jump on him to stop him, and all of a sudden you just didn't deal damage and knock him up. This helps those cases. And so this is a bug fix that definitely does help Bacchus. Yeah, and we'll get to another thing that helps Bacchus tangentially a little bit later on. But mm -hmm. this Bacchusura change fixed a bug which allowed you ca to cancel the leap after casting. Sounds like something weird that wasn't really impactful, mm -hmm. and that's not quite true. It's something weird that's, in fact, incredibly impactful yeah, when minutes. you have someone who can <laughs> use it, which is incredibly rare. So, so Bakasura, so basically, in, in the game, there's a lot of skills that allow you to cancel your auto, like, cancel your in-hands. Yeah. So, for the easy example is, if you auto-attack someone, and then you aim-strike as Loki, yeah. your next auto-attack comes out instantly. There's no auto-attack cooldown, essentially. Um, and so, with this bug, you were able to use take, you were able to, like, start char auto-attack, start charging uh, the leap, cancel it, auto attack, and just yeah. essentially incredibly fast auto attacks early on, and that can be incredibly devastating. So, very hard to do that. Very, very hard to actually execute properly. Yeah. In a lot of cases, you're more likely to end up just accidentally leaping. But it was definitely a a, a big, big issue if you could execute. It. Yes. If if someone ever actually like learned how to do mm -hmm. it, or God forbid, wrote a script, <laughs> that oh. would be. Yeah. I mean, even like. Oh, possibly. Oops. Anyway. Um, I thought that was knowledge. Bastet Pounce moving on uh, can no longer proc Hydra's Lament on a return pounce. And so what that means is when Bastet jumps back, you would occasionally get a charge of Hydra's Lament, which, because of the internal cooldown, didn't happen too often. But it could, you know give her a slight DPS increase under mm -hmm. some strange circumstances. Yeah, so this really kind of... ever The edge cases were... If you were to leap ba leap in, auto attack, wait to leap back, auto attack, you could help clear a camp faster. If you had Hydra's Element, which is sure. not the, it's not a bad item on Bossed at all. Or if like you leap back and someone was there, so you could in hand them again, it would help. Uh, I think this is pretty much an edge case. It doesn't really affect Bossed really at all. Slight DPS loss for people that were using this yes. in jungle camps. That's like about it. <laughs> um, moving on to Cupid, and so this is a bug fix that he was getting too much scaling from his passive when it came to his healing. Mm -hmm. It's not very impactful and overall reduces his healing by about 6%. Reducing Cupid's healing by 6% should not actually affect the yeah, character in any way. Because to share the love, um, that really only when you're going to really feel it is when you have that max stack in your late game. But yeah. likely you're focusing on using your one for the stun anyway. And it's not even that big of a heal loss. Um, I mean, of course, we'll see how Cupid is after this, but yeah. I don't see this really impacting Cupid at all. A late game, it would be a total loss of around 22. Assume it. Cupid generally likes to hit around 450 total uh, when he's got his physical power online and such, and so you, you might lose like 22. Yeah. It's it's not that bad. Um, Fenrir Ragnarok glitch uh, was an interesting, <laughs> interesting bug where you could ult and then blink after you ulted under certain circumstances. Yes. And so you see a Fenrir ult 50 feet from you, and you're like, oh, he pressed yeah. the button too soon. That's silly. And then he blinks at you and chomps you. You're like, oh, oh, he, yes. he blinks. That, that, is, uh, that is definitely a scary thing. Yeah. You think you're safe, and all of a sudden you're just in a dog's mouth. Generally more of an assault and arena thing, not something you'd really see in Conquest, but it has been fixed. Moving on to Geb, and this is a, this is a big balance change. Um... No knockback protection on that stone shield, which is a buff to characters like Tyr, Bacchus, as we mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, and, and honestly, probably biggest of all, Sobek. Yeah. So, Geb is probably the dominant support right now. Yeah. Um, Sylvanas is also really up there. But Geb, so his knockback protection is huge. There's a lot of characters that have knockback effects. You have Hebo's Water Spout. You have Sobek Spin. You have a lot of supports have knockback effects. Yeah. And so being able to counter another support as hard as he was made him very, very potent. So 
instead of nerfing Geb Shield in other ways, because there's an, there's other ways that it could be nerfed. Sure. I think this is the more interesting one because I I, I personally love the counterplay of her, purging hard CC. Sure. I think that's a really cool thing, and it really shows Geb's skill level. And this I think will bring Stone Shield down. And then there's a lot of matchups where this is impactful, so it's going to be overall a pretty decent nerf. Well, the the other thing is like knockback protection as a whole is a cool effect, but it was on an ability that did too much, right? Like, mm -hmm. having someone be able to give someone else knockback protection because knockbacks are so strong in Smite could be cool, but Stone Shield as a whole was bringing too much to the table. So yeah. hopefully something that, you know, Hyrus could revisit in the future is some sort of other support, just not without <laughs> the other stuff. By yeah. itself, knockback protection is good enough. Yes. Uh, moving on to Hell, and Hell actually got a huge buff. Might not seem it, but... Let's remember back what happened to Bastet when yes. she got uh, not really a rework. She got a remodel, and her cast times were significantly reduced. You had a character that was very good but not responsive, mm -hmm. and this is the same thing. Yeah, so old Bastet, for people who don't really remember, it basically all your skills had um, this post-fire delay. You'd charge it up, use it, and then for a little bit afterwards, you couldn't do anything else. And so you couldn't rapidly fire. You couldn't like rapidly jump in, claw, declaw, jump out super quick. There was, there was much more time it took. Yeah. This is essentially what's happening to Hell now. She can... So so right now, if you were to play Hell, you could 3-1 someone in Dark Stance, switch to Light Stance, and then you'd have to wait a little bit to be able to continue your aggression or save yourself with a cleanse or something. Now, really strong Hell players are going to make use of this and be able to stance, stance, cleanse themselves, heal themselves, heal their team, cleanse their team. And we already see how strong cleanse as an effect is with Geb. Yeah. So... I would expect as long as... I, I think this is going to help a lot of Hell players get out of the early stages by being able to cleanse and heal quicker and just be able to do their things quicker, where right now Hell probably has one of the weaker early games. And then once she actually hit... Or weaker early games in terms of being ganked. Yeah. And then can really just shine in the late game by doing a lot of really cool stuff. Now, it will not reset Hell's basic attack progression, which was a old feature... Thing. I'm going to yes. say feature, in competitive play at least, of the uh, original Hell, where s switching senses would allow you to double auto attack. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen anymore. Um, but go just going on to this, I mean, Hell's likely going to come back, and yeah. I think we can talk about that a little bit. So, Hell coming back into the meta, strong healing, alternative to Ra, who will have some adjustments, mm -hmm. and we'll get to that in a bit. Um, there's a few things about this character. She's a cleanse on board. She has magic protection reduction. She has a move speed increase. She has a heal. She has two strong damage abilities and one strong single target damage ability that is a self-heal. That's a lot of words, and what it means that she's got a lot of options. Yeah, she's she's definitely going to be a strong, I think. I don't think she's going to be first pick for spam material. Sure. I think she'll be very good at augmenting team strength. She, yes. Being able to heal, speed up your team, essentially a mini heavenly agility. Having the AoE cleanse, which is really good against the current, like, Geb ulting in hitting sure. four of your teammates, you cleanse them all out of it, and they're free. They don't have to use their beads or anything. Um, I think she is going... And, and being able to do it fast. Before, if, she, if the mm -hmm. team got ulted, you'd have to switch to light stance and wait a while and then cleanse. Or you have to be in light stance already, which is kind of not your optimal place you want to be. Um, and so, hopefully this will bring Hell back. Uh, and it also, the other thing is uh, the early laning stage. Yes. You can now switch stances, get your heal out on yourself quicker to get away from ganks. You can cleanse a lot quicker. Just stuff like that. Yeah, allows more reactive play, which is very cool. Being able to fit in a lot of team comps in a lot of situations and being just very versatile is really what Hell excels at. Could be very strong in the last pick position. Mm -hmm. um, let's say you're up against a team that drafts a Nuwa in their solo lane and something like later game, like a Kali in the jungle. Well, then Hell would probably be fairly safe in the laning phase. You can get her to late game and be that super powerful character that you occasionally still see. But yeah, rarely. she's going to be a very interesting talking point. Yes. So Yanis, uh, threshold visual effects. Basically, you can th see people who are moving <laughs> faster. Not huge on competitive play, but it might help in some situations just because... It allows you to see a speed buff and be like, okay, that's why they're moving faster. Yeah, and a lot of people also understand walking over a Janus threshold yeah. slows them. But I don't think a lot of people fully grasp the whole, if I walk over it, I now go faster. Well, it's, and, it's, and it's aggressive. Too. Yeah, it's aggressive and defensive. Yes. And, and so hopefully also, more people uh, will use it for the aggressive purpose. It also has the same effect when allies move through portals. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to see that as well. And if a jungler pops through a portal, they have this effect on them. You'll be like, okay, they're moving faster. Yes. I need to jump sooner, whatever. Moving into uh, Nija, who has a fixed clap emote, and skipping over to Ra, who <laughs> actually important. got some... It is a... Yeah, you know, Nija can clap properly now. So Ra had two significant nerfs. 
The first one is a move speed reduction, and, and remember, move speed reduction is in part relevant or uh, directly related to the fastest rotating mid laner or mm -hmm. the fastest rotating whoever of that role. So if Ra's in mid lane, you want to compare him to Giannis. Yeah. And Giannis kind of has a monopoly right now. Yeah. And uh, so Giannis right now he can ult, he can get everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where Ra came in and was strong. And if you remember the old Poseidon, Poseidon used to lose his tide, which was tied to movement speed. Yes. They. Thick, they, they adjusted that so that you never lost Tide. And then all of a sudden he became one of the top mages in the game because you could rotate. He was so fast. He's so fast. No other mage could catch him. And so then they toned that down and he went back to kind of being a middle of the pack. Which, oddly Myth. enough, was the patch where Yanis was introduced, yeah. which was a little silly. But. So this is definitely going to be impactful. It, it's essentially 6% over the, the full thing. Mm -hmm. So it's down from 24 to 18. Um, but it, it is noticeable. Yeah, and now talking about Divine Light, that's slow will tick less often because mm -hmm. it's a three second duration. This means it's going from a stacking up to 50% slow to only stacking up to 30%. Yes. So Ra will slow you less. He'll deal less damage with this ability, which will uh, negatively impact the late game burst of high level Ra players mm -hmm. where they could line up their abilities. And it will make Ra players have a harder time confirming their own damage. Yeah. Um, the other thing to note is... You also, because of the movement speed, you used to run into people with yes. Divine Light active, getting right on the edge and then walking into that range and you'd be stacking it. Now that's more punished. If you if you don't get on them immediately, then the slow is going to be even further reduced. Yes. So this overall is going to make Raw a little harder to play. He's going to be moving a little bit slower. He's going to slow a little bit. His skills are not going to be as easy to land. It's not going to be essentially as free. And you won't be able to keep people trapped in that heal for as long. But he still has sustain for his team. He still has really good poke. His ultimate is incredible, especially when you're ganking an enemy mid laner. Yeah. Um, he has a ton of roles that he can fill. He can be the team healer. He can be the team aggressor. So I don't expect Raw to fall off because of this. Right. Hopefully we'll just put him in a good spot. Yeah. And Ra only started to really recently feel as good as he was. Mm -hmm. I mean, his win rate in the SPL from the beginning to the end was absolutely absurd. Yes. His pick rate was really good. But... People weren't noticing it, and now that they're starting to notice it, he gets a negative adjustment, and that might just hopefully pop him right into line. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Sun Wukong, <laughs> who, first of all, gets minion knockback, and that's actually yes. a really big deal, especially in the support role. Also, someone in the solo lane junglers don't really care too much, but yeah. he's going to be able to knock back minions, group up the wave for either the person he's laying with or himself. Yeah, people who are familiar with like the mid lane or the solo lane, for example, know how important it is. If you have the advantage, you can group up the minions to make your AoE hit all the wave instead of maybe just the back or front archers. Um, and also, it, it I would say this almost negatively impacts his, uh, his master's will, because now it spreads the wave out more, which isn't yes. necessarily a bad thing. But in some cases, in terms of clearing... But it's a work. thing. Yeah, it's a thing. It's just it's just something that he was missing for a while, and it, it never kind of really made sense why he was missing it. And sure. so now he has it. He can group up the wave a little bit better with his magic cudgel. It just overall is, is a good thing. Yeah, he's also going to be able to do 20% more damage to minions with the magic cudgel. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of... Sun Wukong needed that, or wanted that cudgel to help his clear. I don't want to say needed, because uh, Master's Will was doing a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. But he wanted that to help his clear, and yet if high res increased the actual damage on it, he instantly becomes too good at poking and instantly becomes one of the better supports in the game, which isn't really what they were looking for. So this will increase damage to minions and jungle camps, mm -hmm. gives them a little bit faster clear, more reason to level that magic cudgel first, and hopefully we'll be able to bring him back in, well, all three of his Yeah, roles. so he used to be an incredible solo laner. He mm -hmm. used to be an incredible support. Never really played much in the jungle. And he went from being, oh, we're going to nerf him a little bit, and then he kind of fell out of the solo role, but became still an amazing support. And then he had a few more nerfs, and he kind of just fell out of play altogether. Yeah. This will bring him back. He'll now be able to clear a lot more effectively. He'll be able to push the dual lane a lot more effectively. It'll help him secure camps more effectively as a support role. And for the jungle role, he actually has pretty good clear now. I wouldn't be surprised to actually see him get picked up in the jungle role now because he does have good gank potential. He has a stun. He has a knockup. He has a slow. He has a way to chase with his ultimate that also slows. Like, he just has a lot to him in terms of gank potential. Cool. Well, it'll be uh, cool to see where he ends yes. up. Uh, definitely Wolfie will be excited about this change. <laughs> yes, this... And the next one. Yes, hey, Wolf, look at this that. Is the, this is the patch this of Wolfie. This is the patch of Wolfie. Yeah. Happy. Congratulations, Wolfie. You've made it. Um, <laughs> so, tier. Tyr is getting a buff to his power stance cleave, or sorry, his guard stance yes. cleave, and it it means it heals twice on the first hit, and then heals 
for one additional target. Yeah, so right now it kind of felt like when you use Power Cleave to heal yourself on the guard stance. It, yeah. it was, you wanted to hit multiple targets. You want to hit the wave, you want to hit three minions, because that's how you got the most healing. But that also made him a little bit weak in the 1v1 exchanges on being able to sustain himself. Mm -hmm. So now he's still, I believe, I believe it works out that he wants to hit multiple targets still, yeah. is his best but now he doesn't feel as punished for hitting only one target. Right, gives him just a little bit more ability in a 1v1 and allows him to sustain in team fights and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So hopefully Tyr will have a little bit more ability to stand his ground. Tyr does have some of the lower base stats of those warriors, but this is going to give him some more on-demand sustain and with his low cooldowns. Yeah. Could be very uh, strong. Last change, just Jean Kui is getting a tooltip update. His exposed evil was only doing 40% damage when... Uh, removed from the target by Exorcism or Book of Demons. That was intended. Mm -hmm. The tooltip was lying to us, and yes. it said 50%. So Nothing Jean really Kui changes. A good yeah, no changes, just people knowing about something that was there in the first place. Yes. So Jean Kui was in a good spot. Yeah. Didn't need to go it's to fine. 50%. 40% was fine, and he's just going to go like that. Let's now talk, given the patch notes holistically, what's going to change, and where's Nox going to fit? Okay, so what I think is going to change is now you have a lot of the gods that have... I, I uh, disengage power and kind of escape power. They can now... Um, they're a little bit stronger. So Tyr, who is pretty mobile, sure. he likes to fear this people, has a little bit more sustain. Sun Wukong's coming back. Hell's coming back. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see a shift away from the assassins that are currently dominating. Okay. And I think bringing some of those characters back that are that can be late game hell can be very devastating, sustaining a team. Tyr is pretty good at uh, shutting down assassins. So is Sun Wukong in terms of stunning and just harassing them. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see a shift away from assassins into a little bit more tanky or even more sustain oriented. Well, that and you know what, with Guan Yu sort of coming into the meta yeah. recently as well, I think that does fit it. So it's a it's a natural change that's sort of being pushed Push forward along. by a patch change, which yeah. And and these characters kind of did need to make that comeback. Um, I agree with you overall. And and Nox coming in, so probably a mid laner could be played in solo, a little bit similar to like Yanis, I feel like. Yeah. Um, definitely stronger early on because of good clear, and good clear generally is a little better in mid than in solo. Mm -hmm. Um, good poke damage. Yeah. Good disengage. What? Here's the question. Give me a team comp that you draft around Nox. Um, so I would look for Nox to be in the mid lane. Okay. Then I would put someone like Yanis in the solo. Sure. And then I would look for a hunter kind of like on her or Rom, uh, give a support like Geb or probably more of the defensive ones, not the aggressive mm -hmm. ones like... Um, Kumba. Yeah, Kumba would be good. I think even Bacchus could be good defensively. Sure. Um, and then you'd pick your jungler to be someone who can really good be good at counter engaging so or Chalk counter gaining. Even. Chalk could be potentially good. I like Thor as well. Okay. Being able to like ult to a lane to make sure Nox doesn't die into a gank, which I think Nox already has. In in some scenarios, you can ult the jungler ganking you and be relatively safe. Sure. Um, but I think that's kind of the comp you're going to want to go for, this kind of defensive, kind of sit back and can can, can find opportunities sure. to go for it because that's really what Nox needs. Yeah, I, I I would only see the other option would be a little bit of a pick composition. Mm -hmm. So something like Sobek or Hercules where, or even Tyr where you can push people out of position, mm -hmm. and then Nox hits them with the link and it's like, okay, if I stay, I die. If I move, I take another big hit of damage mm -hmm. and probably die. Uh, you can silence them to keep them close to you. So could be fairly good at that mm -hmm. too. Nox overall, I think the big thing is you got to keep her out of the the Thor ulting, Bacchus engaging, where like now you have no yeah. heal for yourself. I, I think there's better gods than Nox for that kind of role, like Poseidon, okay. Ra, any Scylla. But in terms of the pit comps or the kind of like disengage poke comps, I think Nox is is a really big fit there. So a little bit like Apollo has self peel. He can measure mm -hmm. himself. He can dash away. Rom on the other hand is like, okay, I'm in trouble. I can roll, jump up in the air, and then wait for my team to bail me out. And I, a mm -hmm. little bit closer to the second one, where like you give your team an option to or an opportunity to bail you out instead of just peeling for yourself. Yeah, cool. that's kind of that's kind of where she falls, I think. All right. Well, hopefully we'll see Knox come out and played both on the PTS server and on live when the patch note does hit. Thank you for inviting me, Pon Pon. Yeah, it was and, fun. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. We'll see you guys. Well, Pon will see you guys in yes. just a few <laughs> minutes with his. Um, Whatever he's doing next. Well, I'm not doing anything next. You're not doing anything next. Hey, we'll you see you in, uh, I'm, I'm a liar. <laughs> we'll see you guys in just a few minutes with the next bit of content on mm -hmm. Smite Game. So stay tuned.